Hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Mohammed uh, Siba, the leader of the National Democratic Alliance, the NDA party of uh, Sierra Leone. Uh, today I want to talk about education, uh, the flagship program of President Bios Free quality education. While I overwhelmingly endorse this agenda, I believe that uh, this five-year phase program focuses more on the short-term access to education. A temporal fix to addressing uh, the immediate material needs of students, but comprehensively offer no sustainability and long-term goal in paying for this flagship project. Uh, the 21% increase in the budgetary allocation on education is indeed a welcoming news. And the plan to establish 154 ward education committees, if followed through, will be a prudent step in the right direction. But the general question is, uh, will President Bio's government be able to implement such build up of a structural agenda uh, that will translate into actions and results. I want to agree with the president that education is an investment for human development. But first, let us crunch some statistical and figures to test the sustainability of this flagship project. Uh, can the SLPP government continue to subsidize the school fees of about 1.3 million school children offer waiver fees for school public exams, provide textbooks on four core subjects, uh, pay the school teachers and uh, support the school feeding program. So far this year, uh, according to government budget estimates, um, the BO's government is expected to be spending about 115 billion leons in 2018. About 200 and 126 billion in 2019 and about 140 billion in 2020. And this estimate will increase at an average of 10% consistent with the school enrollment trend and the unpredictable rate of national inflation. So honestly, the government of uh, Sierra Leone, based on the battered economy it inherited uh, by the APC government and uh, the current lack of exporting and mining revenues uh, do not have the financial capacity 
and uh, resources to pay for this free education flagship program. It has to find creative ways to sustain it or leave it underfunded as the years roll by. Uh, Ghana is among the top education spenders in our sub-region. About 6% of its GDP, but have a stream flow of revenue to pay for its educational budget. Swaziland is, is in fact the highest spender on education, about 9% of its GDP, uh, but its foreign trade on sugar, citrus, and forest products to South Africa, the EU, and the United States of America enables them and gives them the latitude to spend on education. Malawi also spends about 7% of its GDP on education uh, through its export revenues from tobacco to tea and coffee, from sugar to cotton and uranium. But for our beloved Sierra Leone, where is the current exporting and mining revenues to pay for this impressive project over the five-year projection? And so to think that uh, DFID from the UK, Irish Aid and UNESCO will offer supplementary budget assistance on education is a serious mistake. Uh, President Koroma's healthcare program for lactating mothers and under five year old children um, was not sustainable. When development partners fail to fund it subsequently. So we must learn from past experiences. When we repeat them over and over, it becomes nothing more than a national tragedy. The donation of the three month salaries by the president and other public officers to uh, supporting free education in Sierra Leone are good faith effort, but a more uh, secured and reliable funding opportunities are needed to actualize such a worthy national agenda. Uh, for example, Botswana is able to support its free education from the age of uh, six to 13 years through its diamond mining revenues. It is time for us to revive both the mining and exporting industry and attract more foreign direct investment to generate a substantive and significant domestic revenue mobilization. This is a more committed and reliable means of paying for national service program like education. 
we need to create a strong private sector where multinational corporations pay high net tax bracket that would increase government's revenue. We must also develop a new business relationship with the private sector to support Sierra Leone on uh, public education rather than relying on the conventional approach of more aid to sustain our domestic projects whether it is road construction the healthcare sector or agriculture so let me offer some creative solutions to making education a sustainable long-term project that would benefit our children first government needs to change their approach and attitude in the way and manner in which education or any other social service programs are funded. Domestic revenue mobilization must be the ultimate and the primary source of funding. We must develop an innovative financing system such as a private and public partnership. In fact, we can free up nearly 200 billion loans to 300 billion loans on interest that we are paying for domestic debt alone. A fiscally managed economy with a debt consolidation strategy can therefore be a supportive mechanism on our educational program. Second, the management of our educational resources are the biggest challenges to keeping such a lofty program sustainable. Even with the availability of funds to support in tuition payment, textbooks, and the payments of teachers can be mismanaged if improperly supervised and monitored. So we need to build transparent institutions by infusing digitalized technology to track every transaction while making this program cashless and more electronically traceable. The SLPP New Direction is not immune to corruption and dishonest public servants can exploit the loopholes and the lack of accountability and transparency within the system. Uh, corruption destroyed the Sababu project as we know it under President uh, Tijan Kaba. And nearly $40 million went down the drain. Third, government must work with employers to find what I call the skill gap through 
vocational and technical uh, needs. By investing in such a quick access type of uh, training and skills, we can reduce youth unemployment significantly and generate tax revenue as well. We must incorporate also informal learning education to vocational needs. We can harness new technology in our classrooms and universities. Train our young children with access to computer from the age of eight, like what is happening in, in Rwanda. Providing an e-learning environment in our university system, this can build a new innovative experience and in fact, reduce the costs of education. Fourth, the creation of 154 word committee across our geographic region is indeed a very, very impressive strategy. We must build new schools from each of them and village, from districts to districts, where our children and students can attend schools within their jurisdictions. Each school must be equipped with the learning materials, a good sanitary environment with a decent school toilet and a nursing station where our children can be attended to when they are sick in school. A learning environment includes not the, the classroom size, the school furnitures from benches to desk and the availability of electricity and good running water in those schools. That is part of the infrastructure. Uh, the payment of school fees cannot only be considered as free education because that is only one component. Providing the basic infrastructure and logistical support goes a long way to improving the quality of education in Sierra Leone. And so finally, we have to provide school buses to transport school children to and from their respective schools. If we can provide a feeding program for them, uh, they must have the opportunity and the luxury to go to school without walking miles and miles away. We must invest in our teachers by paying them well and giving them the training to be able to teach and educate the children. Universities, without a doubt, are the gateway to economic progress in any nation. We must therefore focus in building our universities with new technological learning tools, provide financial assistance to students who need them, create 
a collaborative access across universities, improving uh, the learning capacity on science and technology, while linking universities to internship jobs and working with the private sector to create a job replacement program. These are the necessary short-term and long-term investments we must make. Sierra Leone will become a country that we are all proud of when we come together from every rank and file to build a system and a culture of academic and vocational learning. We are bound to be a nation not only rich in our tradition and heritage, but abundantly blessed with the new human resources and capital that will take us to new boundaries and new heights. President Bio has taken the first step by starting a process to creating access in educating our children, but more works need to be done collectively and strategically. I am hopeful that we will get there. Thank you very much. God bless Sierra Leone. Thank you for listening.